where we are today, we all have been growing in a very protected environment. If you remember that when we were kids, and whenever we try to do something, we were in a protected environment where we often will listen that please don't do this. If you do this, something will happen. Please don't do this. If you do this, something will happen. And over the period what happened, that if I do something, and if something goes wrong, probably it is not expected out of you. And that protected environment has created a kind of trap around us, where even after reaching at the age of 18, 18 years, 20 years, 40 years, 50 years, we still feel if we go for something, and if it is causes, something which is not expected from the people, from the society, from anyone with whom we are in, con in contact to, it may not seem good. And that's what made us to define or to create a trap around us to define our boundaries and to limit ourselves in our potential, which is known to us. And over the period, what happened because of this? As a human being, we all know we have limitless potential. But because of those barriers, what we have created for ourselves, not to go beyond certain level, because if you go outside, something may happen which may harm me, which may cause me, in reality, it doesn't happen at all. Like if I, if, if I request you all that close your eyes, just close your eyes and imagine you are in a box. And in that box, only you are there and King Lion is inside that box. Just imagine for a moment. Now if you close your eyes and imagine that a lion is there inside and you are facing that lion and now it is the challenge that how you protect yourself. What will you do? You will try to find out something through which you can break that case or that box, whatever it is, and come out of it. But it is closed from outside. You don't have keys. You don't have any way to break that box and come out of it. Now, now we are in the state of fear. We are in the state of losing our lives. And then we start thinking, now I can't do anything. Whatever has to be done will be done by the king line. Now how to protect ourselves? Just open your eyes. Just open your eyes and you are out of that box. You are living in reality and that false imagination is broken and we are still alive. Means sometimes it happens that we create a kind of boundary among, around us and we start feeling that we are in a big trap and it is very difficult and almost impossible to come out of it. And these boundaries are our imaginations. This restricts our power of innovation, power of creativity, power of doing something which can give something which can help not only individuals, families, society, nation, but also to the community. And these all things, whether it is our mental blockage, the, bound, the barriers what we have created because of our thought process, barriers because of some incident or event took place which we witnessed or experienced, and then we start creating a kind of perception, and that perception becomes a barrier which we call the boundary. And till the point we keep ourselves within that boundary, our thought process, our imagination, our Im innovation, which leads to creativity gets restricted. And ordinary people act like this. We all know that when we start thinking that what to do next, every time we, we, we always take into consideration that what we have. And then we scale our aspirations which I can achieve, which I can get within that boundary. Because we are restricted by our resources, which is heavily driving our thought process. But the people, those who have started thinking differently, you don't do 
that's a very famous saying that you don't need to do things, uh, different things, but you are expected and if you start doing things differently, probably it starts creating something new, start adding value to existing one and which is very, very useful for masses even. I still remember one of our student, how, how actually we start creating that trap around this. It, it was batch 2004-7 here at this institute. A very decent student, academically doing well, 75 plus percentile till first and second semester combined together. In third semester, suddenly he start thinking that my father having a small shop in a village, he has taken loan. And now if I don't get a job, how will my father pay that loan, repay that loan? And trust me, within a week time, he used to stay, stay nearby. He was not staying in hostels. In, in a week time, his roommate came to me. Sir, he attempted suicide. Why? Sir, we don't know, but something is going on in his mind which is disturbing him a lot. I called him. Somehow, he came to the institute. I spoke to him what happened. He was not ready to share all these things. When we still insisted and tried to counsel three, four faculty members, we sat together, we started counseling him, talking to him. Then it came out, sir, my father is a very poor person. We don't have any farming land. And my father has taken lakhs of, loan of lakhs of rupees. And if I don't get a job, how will I repay? Now, it was a very peculiar situation, situation because advising someone is very easy. But the person who is passing through that pain, it's something which is beyond imagination. And he created that kind of aura that there are lots of his students who are trying to, who are working hard, trying to get a good job, and they will get, I will not. Nothing is happening on ground, but it was happening in his mind. Somehow, we started working with him. For about two weeks, we continuously worked. After institute hours were used to over around 4.30, we used to sit by 7.38 with him. We worked with him. And somehow, he regained the confidence. He appeared in third semester, semester examination, and he secured 87%. And since then, you will appreciate the kind of confidence he gained because of his hard work, consistent efforts. Now today, he is a vice president in the leading company. So understanding what our limitations are, good. But if it can fuel your journey towards the excellence, what you have set for yourself. If you can realize that what we have today and what I should aspire for, you will find the gap, what you are aspiring, what you have to do, you will find a gap. Now, are we capable, are we ready to put that kind of effort into this so that that gap can be based up to a certain extent, which increases the probability of successful in our personal professional life. Shumak, very uh, popular Roman philosopher, he said, that often people say, when you achieve something, when someone becomes successful, people say that he has a good luck. He defined what actually good luck is. He said that preparedness, when preparedness meets opportunity, it is called good luck. Are we prepared that much? And prepared, preparedness for what? This is very important. If we define, if we try to understand what I want to get, and for that if I start preparing, then I would be able, in better position, I would be able to appreciate and understand what I need to, what I'm supposed to do. And then we can plan and act on it. So this is something, setting up your goal means revisiting our goal, which somehow we have restricted because of known, unknown fear, because of certain boundaries we all have, because until, unless we try to break those boundaries and coming out of it, nothing extraordinary will happen. Otherwise, we are around 195 countries in the world, 
around 7.88 billion population. One country, India, out of 195. We are into Ghaziabad, which hosts around 17 lakhs population. We are one in Ghaziabad out of those 17 lakhs. So whether we want to remain one in 17 lakhs, living life like anyone, or we want to one out of 17 lakhs where our efforts are recognized, where we scale up our aspirations, where we, we, we scale up our efforts, we try to put all our best of efforts to make sure that best happens to me. As a student, it's often I, when, when uh, we talk often we say that at the age of 25, 24 if you get a job and you work for around 30, 40 years at the age of 60 or 65, if you are able to take a flat, what will be of its use? You need that today because you can enjoy today when you are able to enjoy. If you want to buy a Ferrari, what will be of its use when you buy a Ferrari at 60 or 65, at the age of 65, you won't be able to drive because of your physical concern, because body gets degenerated over the period. So whatever we want to have, we should have as early as possible. And if we want to have that as early as possible, then we will have to make ourselves prepared in such a way that we are capable of getting all those things ethically while preserving moral values, not at a point of time when we get everything, but we are not able to enjoy it. Let's, an as an individual, try to understand our boundaries. Try to scale up our objectives, our aims, our goals. Redefine it. Resilience with the fear of failure when we are in process of moving ahead, there would be certain situations, circumstances which will try to push us back. But how resilient we are to bounce back after those failures, it's a very important. And if you can do that, trust me, each of us has that potential to create something which we will leave to our coming generation on which they will feel proud of. So let's decide to redefine our goals. Try to develop that resiliency in the face of failure. And this will lead to the success. And success is always celebrated. Once we are successful, the success will be celebrated. The success will get celebrated, and everyone whomsoever belongs directly or indirectly gets celebrated. So let's celebrate beyond boundaries. Thank you.